So now we're going to talk a little bit about beefing up our chord structures here. And basically, um, most of the great jazz players I've talked to, especially on the guitar, when they think about chord structures and they look at a chord chart, they don't look at all the sharp nines and the flat sevens and the flat fives. Instead, they think of it, is it a minor chord, is it a major chord, or is it a dominant chord? And so what that means is that once you know something is a dominant seven, that means you could substitute in several ways. You could make it a dominant seventh with a ninth. So if we have a C7, if I add the nine, that becomes a C9. I could make it a C11, which means it's at a fourth added. So with this C7, I would just raise this third. Now, on the guitar, it's a little bit complicated because on the piano, where you can play all the notes, you know, ten notes at once, uh, or even more if you mess around, um, you can get all these notes of a chord. But on a guitar, we only have six strings, and we can't always reach everything at the same time. So an actual eleventh would still have a third in it, but this would be more like a suspended fourth, where the third is raised to a fourth. And it's more what you'd find a guitarist being able to reach a lot of the time. Okay? And then the last one would be a thirteenth. And so for a C thirteenth here, I'd be adding a sixth along with the flat seven. So it might be something like this. A lot of times I would play a thirteenth farther up the neck, and I'd play it up here, where I have my C seven. And then the fifth gets add, gets raised to a sixth. Okay, so those are still kind of within the basic way of we think of structure or chords. The chord, notes in the chords are out of the major scale. And then there are other notes which we haven't used yet. So by doing that, we've used like seven notes. We've used the one, three, five, seven, nine, eleven, and thirteen. And there's also the flat five, the sharp five the flat nine and the sharp nine, and those are called the altered tones. And they give a little bit more outside sound. So here's our C7, here's our C7 with a sharp nine, here's our C7 with a flat nine, here's our C7 with a sharp five, here's our C7 with a flat five. And those can get used a lot when you're starting to make a chord progression seem a little bit um, more challenging to the listener in a way. Music is a combination of creating tension and then resolving that tension. The most basic idea of that is this resolving to this. Okay? But there are all kinds of little subsidiary tensions and resolutions which are created. So when you play an altered chord, like if I play This is a little bit of a tension that wants to resolve to this. Okay, so I'm just giving you that idea so you think in terms of sometimes people would hear this chord and go, oh man, that's ugly. Why would you ever use that chord? Nobody would ever use that chord. But the truth of the matter is, well, part of the truth of the matter is that your ear has to become accustomed to some of these sounds. So, so sounds that a, a dyed in the wool jazz fan would, so, would find very interesting and even beautiful might sound ugly to somebody who mostly just listens to folk music or, or uh, singer-songwriter stuff. So let's take a look at this progression and I'm going to give you some specific things you could do with it. So we could start with our F major 7 chord here on the left hand and I could turn it into a major 13th by playing the D instead of the C. And now I have to play my E flat 7 and I'm going to turn it into an E flat 9. And I'm going to take it down to a D9. And then I'm going to go to my um, G7. And what I'm going to use is a G9. And, and the fingering is the same fingering as our minor 7 flat 5. So here the fingering, this would be a B minor 7 flat 5, but it's a G9. And it's a G9 without a root. There's no G in it. If you want the G, you have to reach down here. But this is the sound you get. So you get that instead of this. This is a little more basic sounding. This sounds a little more textured. Okay? So then we'd have something like this.
and then I'm going to go to my G minor, and instead of playing G minor 7, I'm going to play G minor 11. So it's going to go 3 thud, 3 3 1 thud. And then um, my C7, I'll be it's a C7 with a flat 5. And then we'll play the uh, F13 again, F major 13. And then we could use this same, remember we just played this G minor 11? We can do that to the C minor 11 up at the 6th fret. And then bring these two fingers down on the bass strings, and I end up with an F7 flat 5. And then here, I could go to a, um, I could, if I wanted to get a little more outside, here's my B flat major 7 with a sharp 4 or flat 5. And then I'm going to go to a, instead of the B flat minor 7, I'm going to go to a B flat minor 6. And here I'm going to actually substitute the A minor for the F. And I'm going to go to a um, D minor. And for this D minor, I could make it, I could just lift up this third finger, and that's going to make it an, an 11th instead of a regular minor 7th. And here um, I'm going to go to a G13 and then the G9, and then the, um, uh, maybe I could just, here I'm going to just stick to a regular G minor, 7, and then um, here's a C7 with a flat 9, and that's thud, 3-2-3-2, three, two, three, two. and here's my F13 again. I could play an, be an F major ninth, and then um, E flat seven. It's E flat nine, and this time I'm going to do D seven with a flat nine, and then my G nine. And here, this is a great Lenny Bro style change. I'm going to take the E minor seven flat five. And I'm going to actually, where the, the flat third is, we're going to take it down to a second. So it's going to go. And then I have, uh, I, ha I can use my open E string there. And then I have 7, 8, 7, 7. And then I could go to an A with an augmented fifth. This is my A7, and I raise the fifth. So it goes 5, thud, 5, 6, 6. And then for my D minor 7, I go D minor 9, which is um, thud, 5, 3, 5, 5. So that little structure sounds like this. And it has a lead line that comes down that's very dissonant. This is very kind of outside sound. And then you could repeat that. again, and then you have your diminished, which is already sophisticated enough, and then um, here we could go A minor 11, uh, D7 flat 9, G minor 11, C7 flat 9, F. So there you have a whole time through the chord progression in which we played virtually no chords that didn't at least have some upper extension, a ninth, an eleventh, a thirteenth, a flat five, sharp five, flat nine, sharp nine. And that would be a great exercise once you really feel like you have a handle on the basic chord progressions and those basic chord shapes, then you could start to look for stuff that makes it a little more sophisticated. And so what we did, this won't be exact, but some of what we did here sounded like That's a flat five for the G. C7 flat five. B, uh, 
B flat minor six, and then I substituted an A minor here, and then a D minor 11, and then my G9 again. I could actually raise the fifth, and uh, I did a regular G minor seven, and I could do, actually what I could do here is an C, um, this is like a C 11th, where you have the one, you have the root, the flat seven, the ninth, and the eleventh, and you can resolve that so it's, it goes eight thud, eight seven six, and then you can resolve it really interestingly by just moving down your first two fingers, and then you get eight thud, eight six five, and what you have there is a flat nine and the third. So that can be a nice kind of two five one resolution, and then it would come back to an F. Okay, so you get a little idea about how those chords move. So let's finish this off a little. There's the flat nine. Here's the uh, sharp five and the flat five, and here. That's the E minor seven flat five with the uh, ninth. And this is the A7 with the augmented fifth. And this is the D minor ninth. And then we repeat those. G augmented. And then uh, we did A minor 11th, D7 flat 9, G minor 11th, C7 flat 9. F13. So that's, you know, always when I do these things during a lesson, I'm reaching to try to make everything fit this pattern, which I wouldn't normally do if I was playing. I'd let things kind of flow. So you have to um, make exception if parts of this didn't sound like they fit perfectly to you. It's your job to go out and come up with a progression that does fit perfectly to you. Now, what that means on any chords you play, you have the option of turning. Uh, say it's a major seventh, you could turn it into a major ninth, you could turn it into a major eleventh, a major thirteenth, you could turn it into a major seven with a flat five, a major seven with a sharp five. All of those things are available to you, and it's up to you to explore. It's you who gets to choose what you substitute when we're doing this kind of one on one chord substitution. Okay? So that's a little talk about these. Um, uh, these extended chords, and it should open up a door that could keep you busy for a long time.